Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Keith Andrew Nower. This is episode 246. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Anthony Grasso, and I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Sure, my pleasure. Now, for people who want to know what the Keith Andrew Network is, basically, it's my way of showing people that even with having a learning disability, I can still overcome controversy to reach my goals in life. At the same time, I'm able to turn myself into a perfect example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities. But you should never give up and to prove to people that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. Absolutely. And, no, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I said absolutely. And with that being said, it's just proving people wrong. I got a lot of people saying to me that... Um, I know, just being assholes. And so, uh, the theme of the show is uncensored. Freedom of speech, freedom of self-expression, so you can say anything you want. But uh, people are just being assholes saying, yeah, you're, you're doing a good thing, but I want nothing to deal with it, or I want nothing to deal with people like you. So, this is basically, um, for an example, for myself and for people out there saying, don't let people label you, don't let people bring you down. Prove to them you can still mount to something. Prove that you can do better, do something a lot better than them. And there you go. It's just proving people wrong. That's a true story. Now, with that being said, a half hour, 45 minutes of your time, starting off, and I ask you some easy questions, some hard-hitting ones. Then now I'm going to pass it over to you. Okay. You can ask me anything you want, gloves off, making new friends, supporting your cause. And starting off, what can you tell us about your life growing up? And I would start off with that. Sure. Uh, well, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, I've always been interested in the arts. And uh, I moved into then performing art after college and uh, been an actor for about 30 years, uh, training and working. Uh, I also teach acting. And uh, so what was interesting to me was part of being an actor is we we study people's behavior and we and we really uh, pay attention to the world around us because we have to kind of implement that back into the work to tell a story so I thought when you reached out to me part of that was intriguing that um, you know people do have preconceived notions about people and it's the same thing with politics you know People are either, you know, right or left wing, and, and sometimes you know they're still good people. It's just a question of you know where their values live and, and lie. So uh, you know, just being in the arts has, has opened me up to, I I guess a little bit more broad thinking and uh, uh, put myself in a lot of other people's shoes uh, is what I like to say. So. Um, and that's basically it. And then I also do photography as well. So again, it's a it's a constant um, communication with uh, a human. You know, really dealing with how to capture someone, whether it's a photo or if I'm portraying a character. So it's 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 it's, it's basically where I've been in the last twenty nine thirty years. No, absolutely. Now, before we get to your acting career. When you were in high school and college, were you a study nerd, a party animal? <laughs> and did you ever want to be a professional in any sports that you did? Um, well, sports was never my strong suit. Uh, I was fair at sports. Uh, I, I pro probably had my own brothers take care of that uh, part of the arena. Uh, I basically partied earlier than high school. I guess, uh, being from an inner city, uh, I did a lot of shenanigans, if you will, and, and it, it could have taken me a very different road. Um, lucky for strong family values. Uh, I, I give my parents a lot of credit. They wheeled me kind of back in, and, and I think a lot of it was I had all this artistic expression I didn't know what to do with, and finally uh, it landed, and I got involved with the art department at my high school and, and the teachers really took me under their wing and even a drama teacher actually helped me. Um, there's a funny story when 
I was going to get signed out of school because my parents were so upset with me at 16 that um, this drama teacher, Mrs. McKinley, I'll never forget her, she, uh, she overheard in the dean's office and she said, if you come to my class, I'll, I'll pass you and I'll, and I'll work with you. And I said, what's your class? And she said, drama. And my eyes lit up. You know, it was like I heard something that appealed to me. So I went and uh, I fell in love with it. Sadly, I couldn't really pursue it till years later. Uh, I was studying in art at my college. I went to school of visual arts. I got accepted there. And, and you know, and with, with great help from, like I said, my high school teachers, they really supported my portfolio and they got me ready. But uh, I went to Europe at 20 and um, I was painting in the hills of Florence, and it sounds so, you know, romantic, but it was really an awakening to my heritage. Uh, I went with friends from school, and uh, I met an actor, and she said, why don't you do this if you really like it? And I said, I don't know what to do, you know, and so she said, well, let me give you a name, and she passed down a name to me, and I pursued it, and that's how it got pretty much on its way. Um, so, to answer your question, you know, the party, yeah, was, was done earlier, and then I kind of got more serious as, as I got into my 20s, um, but, yeah, <laughs> um, I tell a lot of my young students, because I teach a lot of 20-year-olds, and I tell them, you know, it's all good to have fun, and that's part of it, but, you know, you, you, there's a lot of people wanting the same jobs, um, there's a lot of people wanting to be in this, you know, career, and you have to have that one, I guess, uh, upper hand on them and, and, and be serious about it and be careful. Now with social media, I tell people all the time, you know, you really got to watch what you put on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat, you know, some of them are, you know, holding shots, you know, partying and, you know, getting crazy and, and I think you got to be really careful especially if you want to get a job, not just in the arts, but any, any job. I know people are looking um, at people's profile to see who they are as a person. So, so I don't know if that answered your question. No, it does. Oh, okay. And you do bring up a lot of good things I wanted to ask you. Is what do you teach the kids, number one? I didn't know you were a teaser, number one. And for people who want to know, you're not Steve McGarrett. Um, Hawaii Five O, but you can be a stunt double or a Reese's father. <laughs> yeah, somebody else had mentioned that. I, I don't think I look like her, but okay. Uh, that's the new Hawaii Five O, right? Yes. And that's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody did mention that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot older, obviously. Um, but I think, but probably a similar cut of the cloth, if you will. Um, you know, I have, I have um, an Italian heritage with some Jewish. So, um, so I think it's all, all connected. Um, and who knows, maybe there's Russian in there. Um, and how about you? What is, what is your background? Um, Jewish, Russian. Okay. And I had something else, but that's not what it's mostly Jewish and Russian. And where do you live? Do you live in the New York State area? Yep. And uh, have you ever been to Woodbury Commons? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly where that is. Sure. So if you're ever in the area, we should definitely hang out. Definitely. Mm. Now, for the, the next question I was going to ask you is, was, well, you mentioned you teach people, and also oh. the other one is... That. What do I teach them? I teach acting. I teach on camera, um, TV, film acting. And, you know, it sounds easy, but, you know, when you're a trained actor for theater, uh, there's an enormous change. Uh, that an actor has to make a, a, an enormous adjustment, I should say, that you need to make for the camera because it's a different um, animal. It's a, it's, it's a complete different medium. Um, you're dealing with uh, a camera that's up close and picking up little nuances and microisms, micro expressions, uh, whereas theater, you know, you have to kind of project out. So it's a very different kind of way of working. Um, so I found a niche over the years I've been teaching, about 17 years. And I found a niche in, in 
how to a get an actor who is trained to learn how to behave in front of the camera so that the camera can pick them up uh, um, and the adjustments that need to be made and also for people who never you know had acting and, and how you can still apply some of that naivete if you will uh, to the work you know because sometimes people without training can do very well in front of the camera because they don't have any of the theatrics yet so they can just kind of be themselves and and oddly enough it really works for the camera it's better to have training I always tell actors because there's a jargon and a lingo that you need to know so that when you work with director you know you can understand the adjustments that they're asking you um, especially if you're working with a director knows how to work with actors some do some don't so that's what I do with them so like me basically you know for example I'm good behind the camera but I don't have that lingo Right. I mean, it's, uh, you seem very comfortable behind the camera. Uh, I, and, and I think it has a lot more to do with, you know, the more you do it. Um, I have an ongoing class, and I tell my students all the time that you need to practice, 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 practice. And you get more comfortable just kind of being, you know. And this was your 240 something interview, you said? Yeah, 246. That's amazing. Um, so you're getting better at this, right? You know. Right. Uh, so good for you, good for you. And so yeah, so that's what I do uh, as far as teaching. And I worked with, you know, mainly young adults, twenty and up. But I have I have taught um, tweens and young teens at different programs, and um, I actually probably prefer more of a seventeen and up, just because. I think it's a little easier to keep your attention. You know, it's harder when they're younger. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of reeling in, especially nine, ten year olds. Though. So I kind of vow that I stick more with the older groups. But I, you know, I enjoyed it. I enjoy it. No, absolutely. Now, for someone who's interested in working with you, how much do you charge, and how do you, how do you do your lessons in person via Skype? No, no, I, uh, well, you know, I've been thinking about doing more Skype auditions, uh, training, and private coaching. I would do that. But no, I don't normally teach via Skype. I teach uh, at a school in New York City uh, in the day for them. And then in the evenings, I have private classes. And my price points can be anywhere from 229 to 300 a month uh, to 400 depending on how many classes you take. Um, but I'm pretty reasonable. I try to keep it pretty open. Um, I've been ongoing for about 10 years, meaning I don't really break until I take vacation or if I book a job. Um, this last year, luckily, I had a good couple of hits and I booked nice to the TV work. So then you have to take off. No, absolutely. Well, after the interview, I do have a couple questions for you. Now I'm going to do a quick commercial break. And now for the commercial, and then you should listen to this one because you should be a perfect example. You're a perfect example, but you should be honest. Mm -hmm. Now, the first endorsement I want to do is Target. <laughs> well, it's not Target that I want to talk to you about. <laughs> but Target has a whole bunch of great deals. Don't worry, it's got to be in a little description box underneath. Okay. And actually, I'm going to hold my camera up like this so I know where to edit it. You okay. guys, you know, we're just talking and then I mentioned it, so. Sure. So basically, the target deals will be at the bottom of the screen, but what I wanted to talk to you about, it's, they're one of my affiliations. And even one of my other affiliations, uh, I don't know if you heard of it, it's called CelebrityVM.com. Mm -hmm. And so I'll give you a perfect example. I'm on there. So you come across uh, my website, CelebrityVM, it's called CelebrityVM.com. Mm -hmm. Come across my name. You can type in the Keith Andrew Network or Keith Andrew. I either one of them. And so you come and you find me. For $20, I get to say whatever you want. You know, if it's your birthday, it's a wedding proposal, you want me to wish your daughter a happy birthday, um, huh. your son's graduating college, um, you know, your friend's getting married, whatever you want me to say. 
for twenty dollars, I will do what well, he yeah, as long as it's not provocative, and I can do a shout out, you know, recommendation. And you should be on there because there's actors, actresses, models. Uh, there's people from Breaking the Bad. I, I, do it. I can check it out. Sure. So, yeah, email me that info and I can take a peek at it and see if it's something that I would do. Yeah, absolutely. And for people out there who are fans of Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, yeah. um, WWE, the whole bunch of other things, the cheapest would be, I guess, between 15 and $20. Right. And the reason I go is 20 is because they do take a fee. So, for me, it's 20 But there's other people like Brooke Hogan. Uh, once between 200, there's Gail Kim, mm -hmm. TNA wrestler, once 100, Dennis Rodman. Oh, I got you. Okay. Who once 500. I don't know why you would pay 500 for <laughs> short videos or like this. But now going back to the show. Okay. It's, I'm going to pass it over to you now. Was there any subjects you wanted to talk about? This is your time. You can ask me anything. Uncensored, freedom of speech, freedom of self-expression. This is your time, after all. Um, well, really, not much. I mean, uh, uh, I'm not really accustomed to being interviewed. Being <laughs> so I'm not really uh, sure yet. Uh, I guess, I could, you know, I mean, we could talk politics or we can talk, you know, where you stand in, in, in this whole crazy election. Um, you know, I think I'm pretty clear on my... Uh, Facebook, but, you know, where I'm at and who I'm interested in. Um, I think it's scary time, you know. I do. I think it's really scary that, you know, we could possibly go backwards in this dictatorship kind of mentality and uh, a lot of people are being uh, and I hate to use the word duped, but I think they are. I think they're being duped into thinking one person can make such a change. And You know, maybe I'm being naive or maybe I'm I don't see it, or, but I, I, I'm just, that's not an American way for me, and uh, so, so I've been clear with that. So, I, I don't know, where where do you stand, you know, with... with well, do you support Hillary or Trump? Well, I like to say that I support Democrat. Um, uh, I have some problems with Hillary, but it, it, it's, it's the only two we have, so I have to make sure that um, someone's going to go in. So, yes, I do support Hillary in, in the event that I had to choose, yes. I, um, let's see, it's July. Uh, I would say, I don't know, going back a couple of months, I, I really don't care for Hillary, you know. Right. I don't know her personally, so that's a human being, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. But on the politics and the pol <laughs> politics, what are the politics inside is... Now, she came out and said four more years for Obama, and basically, Obama basically turned the clock back 50 years. You know, he uh, stuck his nose in the, um, those couple of incidents. One was Trayvon, number one, if I had a... First off, you're a president of the United States. You mm -hmm. don't stick your nose in local problems. And then and to put a spin on it and make it into a big deal. So one, he said if I had a son, he would look exactly like Trayvon. And then there was the number one, was the beer summons between... Well, I think he was trying to put a face on it that, you know, these are people. Um, look, my brother was a police officer. He's now retired, and he told me lots of things. And a lot of the criminals that he would catch, or perps, that they would call them, and I think there's a, a serious, serious issue with profiling of African Americans. And um, not all of them. I have best friends who are black, and personally, um, I think it's sad that the majority of people getting, you know, put away uh, are people who are lower income and happen to be African Americans. So I think what maybe Obama was trying to do was put a face to it, to say it could have been my kid. Look, he he did some really good things, and I don't think he got to accomplish many other things. Um, I have a friend who just had breast cancer, and because of Obamacare, she's a freelance artist, just like me, who makes a certain amount of money on, under the radar. And had that never got pushed through, 
she would have never been able to have the treatment and she might have not made it. She had over $150,000 worth of bills that she only paid 100 and change a month, which is very affordable. So I think when we hear those kinds of stories, you know, that's a great thing I think he was able to put together. And some people get mad at it because they think that many people are taking advantage of it, which could be. And, and I think the issue there is that that needs to be monitored a little closer, maybe, and, and really look at the person, not just based on, you know, where they live and how much they make. It's, it's all of it. I think there should be a lot more investigation when you give that kind of liberties. And I enjoy that. I think when I hear that, that makes me happy, especially I'm an artist and I'm a freelance person. So, you know, look, is, is, uh, I was just watching before we got on here, you know, Hillary bringing up her new running mate. And I really enjoyed what he had to say. And I think, so we'll see. You know, we'll see. No, absolutely. It's a great time. I think it will you know, just provide it. I, 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 I really wish the Republican Party was from the person. For me to actually sit down and really, you know, feel okay with either. But, oh, you know, it's from about that. No, absolutely. I apologize for my dog barking. No, that's I a, have no privacy. Yeah, but, a, you know, I would say I, I like Trump, but... He says a lot of stupid shit. Yeah. So he's saying that, things that people want to hear. He's, yeah. I can tell you, you know, what you want to hear and make your head spin. I mean, I've been in a business where I get a guy who wants to be an actor, and I go, you're great. You're terrific. I can make you great. I can make you terrific, and I'll take you all your money and, and put you through a head spin. You know, that's not the story. That's not the case. So, you know, I think you have to really have a plan to see how that's going to happen. And even as a teacher or whoever, you know, is going to tell you these things, you know, blow smoke up your butt. You know, you have to be, uh, you know, really think about what, what they're saying and, and how they're going to get to that. No, I agree with you. Yeah. And, you know, I was going to go for, for Trump, but, you know, it's uh, all this stupid crap when it's out there in LA. You know, they're like just saying, it's better to go to the devil you know than the devil you don't know. Right. So I guess, yeah, I would vote for Hillary. But, you know, basically, I well, just want someone to do a good job. Exactly. I think all of us do. And, and I was actually just saying to somebody, whether you don't like Hillary or not, some people really don't like her. She's hard to like because she's tough and she's a female. And, you know, people aren't custom or comfortable around that. You know, it's a very sexist society. Um, I think she's accomplished. I looked at her record. She's accomplished. And uh, personally, um, if you don't want Trump, then you should vote for Hillary. That's what I tell people, whether you like her or not. Because if you don't vote for her, you're just handing him over another vote. Right. So, so really think about that. You know, get out and vote regardless. Uh, or as you said, you know, no one devil. You know, at least you know the devil. Um, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, that she will stand by what she's saying, and, and uh, maybe there won't be as, as a similar four more years of Obama that a lot of people are worried about. Let's see. Um, oh, absolutely. It, you know, it is a new administration, and hopefully there'll be some differences with it and some change. And but either it, way, you're getting, it's going to be history. You know, first woman president, and she got someone else. So it's so going to be a first a woman president, first a woman vice president. I really don't follow the politics that much, you know, I, I just want to focus on my show. <laughs> right. But well, you know, it's interesting, too, you know, you're a young guy, you're probably in your late 20s, early 20s, and, uh, you know, I didn't either when I was in my 20s. But, you know, I'm a homeowner, I have a kid, um, and I'm a freelance artist, and uh, it's different. It's different. You know, these things really matter now, and you have to make the right choices, and I think everything about life is choices. Um, we're going to have to, unfortunately, wrap because I just got a, an important call coming in. But uh, is there anything else that you want to ask me before we roll? Well, now we actually talked about a lot of hard hitting ones. But wrapping up, how can people follow you on social media? Are you on Facebook, sure. Twitter, YouTube? Um, you can go on Instagram. It's uh, agrasso28, I believe. And then um, my. 
Facebook is Anthony Robert Grasso. Um, that handles all my acting, and I have a fan page there, and I also have my acting studio page there, and my photography. Um, you can also, I think YouTube, just type in Anthony Grasso, something should come up, or Anthony Robert Grasso, one of the two. Um, what else am I on? I think that's it. I, I have Tumblr, but I don't really use it. Yeah, Tumblr is really bad. <laughs> yeah, I just it's just too many too many so I basically you'll always see me on Facebook or or Instagram and Twitter I mean you can go to Twitter it's uh, Anthony Grasso 28 as well well stay tuned for <laughs> the, I asked you crossing off the air real fast sure we're wrapping up the interview segment it was a real honor and privilege to have you on the show and I'm looking forward to building a friendship with you as well thanks yeah it was a pleasure um, and keep it up man reach out and uh you know, I think it's, I have a few friends with, um, you know, disabilities, if you will, and, and uh, a, a friend who has a child who's autistic, and, um, and it's a, it's huge, it's huge uh, each day uh, to get through the, I guess, those preconceived ideas and, and, you know, feeling different. So I think it's terrific. And uh, just do what you're doing. That's no, what you're absolutely. Saying. They're more than welcome to be on the show. Yeah, do what you're doing. I think that's great. I really do. 